Welcome to Golden Software's demonstration video for Digger 3, Part 5. In this demonstration, I'll be covering the topics of digitizing and output. After the tablet or the raster project is calibrated, or you imported a georeferenced bitmap, a data, or a vector file into a vector project, you can begin digitizing. Digitizing is the process of transferring paper document information, bitmap information, or other data to your computer by creating points, lines, and areas that are spatially related and have real-world coordinates. In this example, I imported a georeferenced bitmap into layer 1 of a vector project, and I'll do all my digitizing in layer 2. Points are used to represent spot locations, like a well location, a sample location, or if you just need to find out the specific coordinates for a particular point on a map or a graph. To digitize a point, go to Digitize Point or click on the Digitize Point icon on the toolbar. In the Digitize Points dialog, you are asked to specify some properties for the points you'll digitize. On the Data Attributes tab, you can enter up to four IDs for your point. This can be something like a well name, a field location, etc. You can also choose to enter the ID information after you digitize the point by checking the Enter Data After Creating Object checkbox. If you have many points you're going to digitize one right after the other, check the Create Several Objects checkbox. Or if you want the ID information to be automatically incremented, like if you'll create seven objects and they'll have a primary ID of one through seven respectively, you can check the Auto Increment Primary ID checkbox and then fill in the information below. I'll start with a value of one and end with a value of seven. I'll also enter an ID prefix of MW and then clear the ID suffix field. The symbol properties tab will show you the shape, color, and size of the symbol you'll create. I'll choose a diamond shape, a pink color, and I'll increase the size to 0.25 inches. The Label Layout tab will allow you to label the point with one of the four IDs. Since we created a primary ID, I'll select the primary ID label and click Add. I'll choose to position the label to the left of the symbol by clicking on the little arrow to the left of center. You can see the preview of the label position to the right. When you've set the properties you want, simply click OK. Your cursor will turn into a bullseye shape. Click on the screen or on the tablet where you want the symbol to be located. In this case, I'm digitizing all seven of the monitoring wells, so I'll click on each one. After the symbols are created, you can change any of the properties of that symbol by double-clicking on it, resetting the properties, and clicking OK. In this case, I'll change the label layout for this point to show the label to the right of the point and click OK. Polylines are used to represent lines, such as roads, contours, rivers, or political boundaries. Polylines are made up of multiple vertices connected by straight line segments. To digitize a polyline, go to Digitize Polyline, or click on the Digitize Polyline icon on the toolbar. In the Digitize Polylines dialog box, you're asked to specify the properties for the polyline you're going to digitize. The Data Attributes tab is the same as if you're digitizing points. I'll clear the primary ID field and then check Create Several Objects so I can digitize multiple polylines one right after the other. The Line Properties tab is where you specify the line style, color, width, and any end style such as arrows. The Label Layout tab will allow you to label the polyline with one of four IDs. I didn't enter any ID information so I'll leave the section blank. When you've set the properties you want, simply click OK. Your cursor will turn into a bullseye shape. You can digitize a polyline in one of two ways. You can click each point that makes up the polyline, or you can hold the mouse button down and trace the polyline with the button being held down. This is called stream mode digitizing. Double click to end digitizing a polyline. Digitize the other polylines until they're all digitized. For the sake of speed, I won't be digitizing the polylines very accurately. Once all the polylines are digitized, I hit the escape key to end the digitizing mode. 
If after the polyline is created you want to change any of its properties, all you have to do is double click on it, reset the properties, and click OK. For example, I'll double click on this polyline and enter the contour value of 88.12 as a primary ID. Then I'll go to the Label Layout tab and choose to label the polyline with that ID below the polyline. When I click OK, the label shows up. Polygons are used to represent a closed area, like a lake or a building. A polygon is similar to a polyline in Digger, except that the first and last vertices occupy the exact same XY position. To digitize a polygon, go to Digitize Polygon, or click on the Digitize Polygon icon on the toolbar. In the Digitize Polygons dialog box, you're asked to specify the properties for the polygon you're going to digitize. The Data Attributes tab is the same as when you're going to digitize points or polylines. Since I'll only be digitizing one polygon, I'll uncheck the Create Several Objects checkbox. The Line Properties tab is where you specify the line style, color, and width. The Fill Properties tab is where you'll specify the fill pattern for the area inside the polygon. You can choose many different types of fill patterns and different foreground and background colors. I'll choose a blue foreground color and I'll make the background transparent by unchecking the background checkbox. The Label Layout tab will allow you to label the polygon with one of the four IDs. Since I didn't enter any information, I'm going to leave this section blank. When you've set the properties you want, simply click OK. Your cursor will turn into a bullseye shape. You can digitize a polygon in the same two ways as digitizing a polyline either by clicking on the individual points or digitizing in stream mode. Double click to end the digitizing and Digger will automatically snap the ends together to create a closed object. If after the polygon is created you want to change any of its properties all you have to do is double click on it, reset the properties, and then click OK. In this example the polygon covers the point and polyline objects behind it. I'll move the polygon behind the point in Polyline Objects by selecting it and going to Edit, Arrange, Move to Back. This will move the polygon to the bottom of Layer 2 so that the points and polylines are all drawn on top of it. Once objects have been digitized, overlaid, or imported, you can export the data to many different file formats. You can go to File, Export, and export an ASCII data file, you can export to vector files such as AutoCAD DXF, Esri Shape, or MapInfo MIF, and you can export to raster formats such as TIFF, bitmaps, and JPEGs. You can also export to georeferenced image formats such as GeoTIFFs. To export a GeoTIFF file, choose to save the file in tagged image TIFF format. Type in a file name and click Save. The tagged image TIFF export dialog box will pop up. In the bottom section, choose the radio button next to Save Spatial Reference Information In, and then check the checkbox next to one or more of the four supported georeferencing formats. For example, if I check the checkbox next to GeoTIFF format and click OK, the TIFF file will be exported in GeoTIFF format. If I also check the checkbox next to Esri World file, then a GeoTIFF file will be created in addition to an Esri World TFW file. Choose as many formats as you like and click OK to export the image. Digger also has the option to automatically export your Digger project directly into Surfer as a base map. This option is only available if you have Surfer version 7 or higher installed on your computer and can be found by going to File, Create Surfer Base Map. If your project is a vector project and has a bitmap imported into it, then you're prompted for the bitmap export options. Make any changes you like and click OK. I'm going to speed up the video during this process. All the Digger objects, including the bitmap, will be imported into Surfer as a base map and georeferenced correctly. This makes it really easy to import georeferenced images directly into Surfer from Digger. However, make sure you have the bitmap imported into a vector project because this command will not carry the bitmap into Surfer if used from a raster project. You can also go to File Print and print your map to any Windows compatible printer. The scale it will be printed at full size can be seen by going to View Project Limits. 
In the Print dialog box, you can also choose to scale the project to a percentage of its full size, to fit it to a page, or to print the project tiled on many pages if it doesn't fit on one page. Technical support has always been a high priority at Golden Software. If you ever have any problems using Digger or any questions, please give us a call at 303-279-1021 or you can go to Help, Feedback, Problem Report to email us a problem report, Suggestions to email us any suggestions you have to improve Digger, or Information Request if you would like some additional information. Our contact information can also be found by going to Help About Digger. This concludes my demonstration of Digger 3. You can get more experience using Digger by walking through the tutorial accessed by going to Help Tutorial. Thanks for watching.